I am Fabrizio Cerreto and I will present my PhD thesis here today, uh, which is called Analytical Big Data and Simulation Models of Railway Delays. An overview of the content, uh, uh, I will start with some research motivation, uh, explaining the reason why we started this, uh, this research project. And I will go through the three different uh, chapters of the, of the thesis, where we develop different models with different techniques to understand how to improve the reliability of the railway service. And eventually I will summarize the main contribution of this thesis in, in the conclusion section. So to start with some uh, research motivation, we have the general uh, goal of the local authorities to bring people to, to bring passengers to the uh, railway transport because it is more efficient, it has a higher capacity than other means of transportation like for example the individual car uh, transport. But to attract passengers, to improve the attractiveness of the passengers, we have some effects, some uh, impact of the magnitude of delays meant like uh, the expected delays that the passengers will have on the, compared to the schedule. Even more influent on the attractiveness of the railway transit is the variability of the travel times. That means that not only I want to arrive on the schedule, but of all I, as a passenger, as a passenger, I would also like to be sure that I will arrive at some point. Even if there's some delay, I would like that to be constant over time. The last thing that I would like to mention that has a high impact on the attractiveness of the transport system is the travel time. We cannot just inflate the running times with some buffer, some uh, timetable slab, because then, of course, would uh, drop the attractiveness of the transport compared to other means of transportation. So to do this, to improve the reliability of the service, we need to understand what are the processes that generate delays and how these delays propagate across the, uh, the services and eventually how we can recover the best uh, from uh, disturbed uh, operation. To do this, uh, I divided the, this thesis in three main sections. In the first section, we have a paper that I presented at the Rail Tokyo conference in 2015, where there is a, um, a review of the available reliability measures of railway uh, timetables. And we will find out from this uh, section that the best fit for our purpose is uh, simulation-based um, measures. So measures that uh, compare the cause-effect uh, of perturbations. This, uh, these measures that uh, rely on simulation unfortunately take too long time uh, to be calculated to be integrated in optimization models and in recursive applications. For this reason, we introduced the second, uh, the second chapter where we developed some analytical models to estimate or to mimic the results from the, uh, from the simulation models, uh, just done it in a faster way so that we can include this into uh, recursive calculation and, for example, in other uh, environments that require faster calculation, like, for example, online uh, dispatch or decision support system. To fit these models with uh, parameters like the buffer time or the uh, timetable slack, we will need some analysis from realized operation to assess what is the actual, as I mentioned, uh, running time supplement or um, headway buffer. Eventually, the last paper will also investigate the existence of recurrent delay patterns so that we can tackle specific processes that generate delays in the railway operation so that we can uh, design ad hoc uh, or focused uh, countermeasures for delay uh, mitigation. I would like to, um, to mention that this PhD research project is part of a larger research pro project which is running here at DTU, which uh, follows this scheme. And it is an interdepartmental research project uh, that aims, it is called IPTOP, and it aims at integrate uh, the different phases of the planning process of the transportation, from the line planning to the uh, rostering of the crews and of the running stocks, and also across uh, different, different modes of transport. In particular, this PhD research project uh, focuses on the work package 4, which is about understanding delays and simulate operation. In particular, I want to highlight this link between optimization work package and the uh, simulation of operation. And this is the link that requires fast calculation to get the evaluation of the solutions from the work package 
from, from the timetable optimization so that we can uh, run this evaluation several times. Every single second that we add on, on, on this evaluation will be repeated several times that sum up and uh, generate too large calculation, uh, calculations time. Now, to go into the core of the, of the research, we started with some measures of uh, reliability uh, of the railway services. And in particular, we, uh, we focus on this paper that I mentioned before, presented uh, at this conference. Uh, we want to un understand what are the reliability measures that are best fit for our purpose. In particular, we can see there are many different aspects of the reliability. Some measures focus on the daily operations, so on the de small deviations that we can have in the daily operation and how the commuters can trust the, um, the uh, railway transit. Or there are other measures, like for example, we can measure the number of cancellations, that focus more on the extreme events, like a snowstorm, like in this example, where we, have, we know already that the reliability of the service will drop, but we can measure how, uh, what will be the, the, um, the effect of this. We will focus on the daily operation, and in particular, we can define, or we selected the definitions of reliability as the two most common in, in literature, which are stability and robustness. In particular, stability refers to the ability of the timetable to recover from delay through, uh, through the timetable slack. That means it is usually uh, measured by the time that passes between uh, a primary delay or an incident and the time uh, where all the circulation is back, in, uh, back again in, a, in the schedule. The robustness instead looks a little more on, on the um, goodness of the, uh, or uh, the ability of the timetable to uh, withstand daily vari vari small variations in the daily operations. So this, mean, this can mean, for example, a good allocation of uh, timetable slack or a good estimation of the minimum running times so that the distributions of the process time are actually a good fit in the, in the timetable. Now, strategies to improve the reliability uh, are well known in, uh, in literature. There is quite a general knowledge. In fact, there's also this picture that I wanted to show, which is from the International Union of, uh, of the Railways. The, this picture and literature say that to increase the reliability, known the capacity of the, of the railway transit or, of, or uh, of a specific railway system, uh, what we can do is to either increase the slack, which means basically increasing the stability, or we can reduce the heterogeneity of the uh, schedules. So more homogeneous running times, uh, headway buffers, and headways uh, across, across the, the services. Now, these two strategies reflect into the, uh, what are the main uh, measures that are available in literature for reliability. In particular, I wanted to group to classify these available measures in two main groups. First of all, we have measures that, me that assess or that describe the timetable structure. So we have, for example, here the dispersion of the headways. We can have the dispersions of the running times and so on. Or other measure st measures still in this group measure the total amount of timetable slack. So this refers back to the stability that I just mentioned. On the other side, the, the other group refers to the measures of the cause-effect relationship. So in these cases, what we do is to simulate some known uh, primary delays and to measure the effect that these delays generate on the railway lines. And the way we do it is through simulation. What we usually find uh, as a measure in the in literature is the measure of the aggregate delay or the settling time or the number of trains delayed, all in relation to the primary delay that was ge generated. Now, the, e the main issue with these simulation-based uh, measures is that they are simulation-based, meaning that simulation takes very long time, so we need to reduce the amount of simulation to be able to include these measures into uh, faster um, mo models or environments. What we usually do is to sample the simulations that are needed. So we estimate the effect through a lower section, a lower sample, a smaller sample, sorry, uh, of the simulation that we could run. If we look at the heterogeneous timetables, like in this example, this cause-effect relationship depends on the, on the specific train that receives uh, the primary delay. So in these two examples of, of the same timetable, we can see that the same four minutes 
primary delay generates this conflict if it is given to this train or if it can generate this many conflicts if it is given to this other train. Now what we want to do is to estimate the effect, the general, the overall effect of the whole train table. And what we can do is to uh, sample the simulations only looking at the effect that is given by just uh, by only delaying or giving primary delays to one specific uh, train. And the way we select the train that we want to delay or to find the relation uh, which we want to use for uh, finding the relationship between primary delays and aggregate delays is to simulate in a, protect, in a smaller environment all, this, all the uh, relationship between primary delays and aggregate delays. And these are all uh, functions that describe the aggregate delay uh, as a function of the primary delay given to different trains. Then we want to measure the general, the overall effect of the, of the timetable. So what we want to do is to calculate the average function. And then what we do lastly is to select the, uh, the train that we are going to assign, a, uh, which we are going to assign a primary delay to is uh, the one that uh, minimizes the mean square error from the average. Now, this done, having selected and reduced the number of simulation, I would like to, uh, to talk about the case study. In particular, the, in, the, in this case, we went, uh, we analyzed a Dutch railway line. And the reason why we, start, we studied the Dutch railway line is because the Danish and the uh, Dutch railway networks uh, present characteristics that are similar to each other. They are more or less the same extension and they have the same level of uh, heterogeneity. But in this specific case, we had the chance to compare different phases uh, of infrastructure scenarios of the development that is undergoing on this specific line. So this is the line between The Hague and uh, Rotterdam. And up to 2015, it looked like this. There, there was this vi uh, viaduct in Delft, which was replacing, replaced in 2015 with a higher speed uh, profile, with a, um, a layout that allowed higher speed. And it is now undergoing uh, further work to extend the four track section. Interestingly, in this case, we found that by the comparison of this specific case, we found that the phase three uh, scenario would be the one that allowed us the best, uh, the best trade-off between increasing the traffic uh, volume and uh, redu uh, the, the reduction of, uh, of reliability. And very interestingly, very few days, just a few days ago, a couple of days ago, the Dutch infrastructure manager just confirmed that they are going to build exactly these infrastructure scenarios and they are going to implement a new signaling system confirming exactly the results from this piece of research. Now to go to the theoretical findings of this, of this, of this paper, the comparison that I mentioned at the beginning, the review of the, um, of the reliability measures, we can see that the first class of, of, uh, of, um, of measures, uh, they are not so sensible, sensitive to, uh, to the increases of traffic volume. So we can see that the indices of sensitivity to in this, uh, increases of uh, traffic volume are very low. The only one that was actually exp exp expressing some uh, decrease of reliability was the SSHR and SAHR, which are the sum of arrival or shortest headway receiver calls. And this is a little dangerous because that could mean that if we have a homogeneous timetable which is more packed than another timetable, more heterogeneous but uh, with lower train, it could result in a, a lower reliability of the uh, uh, less dense timetable because it is heterogeneous. On the other side, we, get, we have the, the, if, uh, the sensitivity of the cause-effect relationships. And we can see that the cause-effect uh, measures are way more sensitive towards the increases of traffic volume. And in particular, the total delay uh, measure as a function of the primary delay was, um, was the most sensitive. Now to conclude this paper and to give the theoretical insight that was the, the contribution of this paper, uh, I want to highlight that we just found uh, the goodness of fit to our purpose to understand how we can improve the service, uh, implementing new, uh, new train services on the line without uh, reducing the, um, the reliability, then the, the first uh, set of measures, the, the cost effect uh, measures were a, most fi a best fit for, for this purpose. On the other side, the structure of the time, the measures of the structured timetable did, did 
uh, hide the effect of some kind of timetable slack. There were some measures that uh, focused on the, uh, only on the running time supplement or other measures that only focused on the headway buffers or some other that focused on the, on the combination. But uh, some effects were, uh, were hidden by, by these measures. Unfortunately, uh, this first uh, set of, um, of measures takes too long time because simulation takes too long time to be integrated in optimization and this will be the light motif of this presentation maybe. Uh, we then need some other me uh, alternative methods to estimate this, uh, this same uh, relationship. Lastly, something that was not shown but is important is that we confirmed or we found something that is already known in literature but was confirmed from this simulation um, study is that there is a polynomial relationship between the aggregate line delay and the uh, initial delay given to uh, one specific train. And this is also the foundation of the next section where we will uh, develop an analytical delay model, delay propagation model which is based on this polynomial relationship. Now this introduces us to the second section of the, of, the, um, of the thesis where we have two different papers that were uh, presented at the Transport Infra Infrastructure and System Conference in 2017 and it is also uh, submitted and under review for a paper into Transportation Research Part C. This uh, figure show, shows a person that is in front of the information panel at the station. And what we usually see at this, uh, at this point is that there's maybe the first train that is delayed and all the trains that come from the same direction also delayed with a, uh, with a decreasing uh, amount of, of, uh, of delay. And this is because the delay is transferred to the following trains in railways and this system is m less flexible than other transportation systems. So what we want to know now is, how, is to understand how this uh, these delays propagate to the following trains. So from the previous sections we found that the cause-effect relationship uh, are, uh, are point of interest and we understood that simulation is too, too slow and we need faster method. In particular we are going to develop an analytical method in the model in this section. We will focus on, in particular on this, uh, in this section to the aggregate line delay as a function of the primary delay. And this is because this is a common uh, measure that is used both in research to evaluate, for example, the result of optimization of timetables, or even it is used as ex post um, measurement of the reliability of the realized operation in services. The structure of the timetable. Now, uh, as I mentioned, we want to find the relationship between the primary delay and the aggregate line delay. And the way we do it is to split the, mod the, the model into two steps. First of all, we want to propagate this, individual train, this primary delay to know every individual train delay recorded at every station. And in the second step, we calculate what is the summation domain where we want to sum all these individual train delays to calculate the aggregate line delay. And I will explain the two, uh, the two steps uh, separately. So the first step, I, uh, just to uh, mention it again, we want to find the delay per train per station, which is the individual train delay, as a function of the primary delay. If we look at this time table, we have, or the, uh, yeah, this string line, we have the dotted lines which represent the uh, theoretical time table and the, do the bold line, lines that represent the real operation. These numbers are the measured deviation uh, of the trains at individual station. And these are exactly what we want to find at this step of the research. We model every individual train delay as the result of either hindrance disturbances um, transmitted, uh, propagated from the previous trains, and in this case the delay will be reduced by the amount of uh, headway buffers between the trains, or this individual train delay can be the resulting part or the residual delay from the previous station which has not been recovered yet. Now this type of formulation is not easy to handle because there is a maximi uh, maximization uh, function and two different uh, elements. But what, uh, what we can to do is to introduce some simplifying assumptions which are to calculate some equivalent aggregate tangible allowance and buffers so we uh, do not have any longer spe train specific and station specific um, elements for the tangible allowance uh, to 
get to a linear relationship between the primary delay and the individual train delays. And this formulation is way easier to handle in optimization model or in the analytical delay model. Note that this assumption does not mean that the timetable needs to be exactly the same for all the trains and for all the stations. We are not saying that the timetable allowance should be exactly the same in the real schedule. We are approximating the real allocation of the timetable, uh, timetable allowance just considering the amount, uh, the, the shared amount. And we provide some methods to estimate these equivalent measures in the analytical model. Now we know that every individual train delay through this uh, formulation and we want to identify what is the summation domain. So we have in this example in the station train domain that we have this primary delay of 14 minutes that propagates through stations and trains. And what we want to do is to sum this is the submission formulation, all the individual train delays, and we want to do it only where these individual train delays result uh, non-negative. The way we do it from the first step, from the, in the delay propagation model, we can find what is the recovery train and station, which are exactly this point and this point where they, these are the last train and station where a, a delay is recorded. So if we approximate this into the uh, continuous uh, domain, we have this triangular shape of the recovery region, which is where all the delays are non-negative, which is defined by the linear relationship, and the study region, which is our in domain of interest. So we are only studying, in this case, the first three trains and the four, first four stations. We want to develop a flexible model where we keep summing always the same formulation, just updating the summation boundaries, which are this uh, recovery train and recovery station. And plus, we want the model to be flexible enough to estimate also only the intersection between the recovery region and the study region. So if we have a larger uh, primary delay, the recovery, uh, the recovery region will extend down to exceed uh, up to exceeding the study region. And in this case, we want to calculate the, the, the whole study region. We want to sum up on the overall study region. But in this way, we can also move the point of primary, primary delay in this domain of training station. And we will we'll always calculate all, only the summations over this uh, intersection of the areas. Now, this is important because in this way we can, cal we can, uh, we can apply this method in recursive calculation. That means we can simulate multiple primary delays summing the individual effects of the, of the individual primary delays. And plus, we can apply this study to, uh, to more complex lines, <coughs> like, for example, uh, lines with a, with a junction or uh, with, a, uh, with uh, diverging points. In this specific case, we have some higher traffic volume in, this, in the first section and uh, lower traffic volume in the, in the second section. And what we can do is to divide this study region into two sub-study sub region, uh, study sub region and to propagate the first primary delay down to the second uh, region and then start over. Now the application is now back to Denmark, is on the suburban railway line that uh, passes close by here to uh, Limbu station. And uh, this is a, a slightly modified timetable because in this case we have a homogeneous timetable to better meet the main assumption of the model. I will go uh, farther in the next paper explaining the extension towards the heterogeneous uh, timetables. In this case, you can see that the results from the simulation are perfectly mimic mimicked by the model where we have a, a, a composite polynomial relationship. Now, this is the model that I just presented. It can be applied to uh, homogeneous train timetables where the aggregate line delay is train independent as a function of the primary delay. And this can easily be applied to metro lines or to homogeneous services where we have, for example, exclusively high speed trains or uh, homogeneous suburban railway lines. But if we want to move towards the heterogeneous timetables where we have heterogeneous service, we need to add two further steps at the beginning and at the end, where in these cases, we found that the relation is train dependent. So uh, the relationship depends on the individual train that received the, the uh, primary delay. In this model, in this extended model, we include the probability of generating a primary delay given the characteristic of an incident, and then we estimate the average, um, the average result uh, on the, on the timetable uh, giving delays at any uh, random 
uh, train uh, service. Now, to, uh, just as I did before, I will explain stepwise the, the method. In particular, the incident is the first part that generates the, the primary delay. We define, we model the incident as a blocking incident where the, that means that the trains cannot operate at that, uh, for a center end point. This can be, for example, a signal failure or an extended dwelling time at the, at the stations due to overcrowding. We define these distributions of starting time and duration and in the first instance we can use, uh, we can uh, simplify this assumption taking uh, uniform distribution, but we can also take, it, take other, any other type of distributions. Knowing the duration and the starting point, we can calculate what is the distribution of the ending time of this incident, which will be the key towards the, uh, aggregate, uh, the um, primary delay generation. As I mentioned before, it's not necessary that these, these distributions are uniform. We can take any other type of distribution that is known from literature. What's important is that we can truncate these distributions at the maximum uh, value of duration or initial time. Now, from the individual delay, we, uh, we have, oh, sorry, from the initial uh, incident, we generate uh, the primary delay uh, with the delay generation model. And this is uh, linked to, uh, this is based on the intersection of the two events. So there is an incident and the train is departing. In particular, if, you want to, if we want to look this on the time scale, we have on the bottom side, we have the timetable structure. So we are trying to understand what is the uh, probability to delay this uh, specific train given the characteristics of the timetable and of the, uh, the incident. And we have the stochastic features of the incident that I just described. And we define the primary delay only when the incident starts before our train and it ends after the scheduled departure of our train. And this is what is generating the primary delay, the difference between the ending time and the scheduled departure time of our train. From this uh, model, we, we can shrink the uh, probability domain to find what is, to calculate what is the probability of delaying uh, individual trains in the timetable uh, after we know, uh, given the, the characteristics of the, uh, of the, uh, of the um, incident. And we can also calculate what is the probability to, um, to not generate any uh, primary delay at all. Uh, this is the uh, application to, work, uh, to uh, heterogeneous timetables and we can see this is exactly the same case study as before but with a real timetable and we can see that here if we, sum, uh, if we calculate the, uh, the effect, the relationship between the two uh, given uh, by uh, delaying either line A or line E those still follow the, uh, the same um, function as before and we can average out this to um, <coughs> this relationship using the probability that I uh, described before. Uh, now to conclude also this section which was made of the, this is the conclusion of the combined two papers. First of all, we have identified a closed form function of primary delay and aggregate delay, which is fast in calculation that allows us to inc include this uh, model into uh, optimization models. We also uh, identified, this is important because we focused on the aggregate line delay, but there's chances to focus on any other type of measures that are based on the measurement of individual train delays. That can be, for example, the settling time average train delay, because we know every individual train delay at every station. La uh, lastly, some theoretical insight into the theoretical structure of the delays. We found this polynomial functional, re uh, uh, functional relationship between primary and aggregate delay which is made of a composite polynomial which spans uh, from the first to the third degree according to the difference, the, the relationship between the size of the study region and the recovery region. Plus, being a polynomial, we could differentiate this. We could apply differential calculus to understand what is the marginal increment in variability or decrease of aggregate line delay as a function of the timetable slack. And in this specific case, or not in this specific case, but in general, in the, in the theoretical structure of the model, we could find that the benefit of increasing the, uh, the, mm, the timetable slack reduces with its magnitude. So it's not, it's not true that we can just inflate the timetables to the infinite 
to the infinite to improve the reliability because there is a limit towards the, uh, to the effect in, uh, effectiveness of this uh, gain in reliability. Now, this analytical model needs some input, some, such, for example, the uh, timetable supplement, the running time supplement, or uh, the headway buffer. And we can estimate this, or we can find this from historical data from realized operation. And that's what introduces us to the last section of this, uh, of this uh, paper, where in the two in the, this thesis, where in the two papers, we uh, analyzed data from the RailNet Denmark to find what are the, uh, the actual minimum running times and the, the presence of the existence of uh, recurrent delay patterns. So to describe the first paper of this section, uh, the reason why we start this is because it, there is a difference between the, scheduled phase of, uh, the scheduling phase of the planning and the operation. In particular, in the, uh, in the scheduling phase, we estimate the minimum running times. We do not know whether these are true, because uh, this is an estimation. And this can be done uh, with analytical formulation or with micro simulation or other methods. On top of this, we add some margin, uh, which we estimate to be sufficient. But in real operation, actually, these real, uh, this minimum running times do depend on several factors that we might or might not uh, take enough into account. That gives then the, the um, that generates then the actual um, uh, possible delay, rec uh, delay recovery. Now, the uncertainty or let's say the accuracy or the inaccuracy in the estimation of the minimum running times towards the operation generates eventually some uncertainty in, the, in what is the actually possible delay recovery between, the, uh, between stations or between trains, which is what feeds the analytical model from the previous, uh, from the previous uh, section. Now, we took uh, data from RailNet Denmark and we identified uh, what were the running times from the timestamps uh, on, a rail, on our railway line, and we found we identified the distributions of running time on a specific railway line that allowed us to compare what, uh, what is the minimum feasible running time and the uh, schedule. That tells us what is the actually uh, available um, running time supplement. The next step is understanding what is the probability or how, the, how this. Um, this running time supplement actually translate into possible recovery because it's not said that the recovery is always used. In fact, we analyzed the most uh, densely occupied line in Denmark, which is the line between Roskilde and Copenhagen, where basically all the trains to Copenhagen uh, pass by to go to Jutland and Germany. And we plotted the delay. Uh, these are uh, delays recorded from Roskilde to uh, Copenhagen. In particular, these trains are not stopping in, uh, in Roskilde. That means that they can travel early. This is the reason why we have some points here on the left-hand left -hand side of the, of the zero. First of all, we can see that there's some increasing variability, which is a, a known effect in, the, in, the, in literature. Uh, an, increasing, an increasing variability of the delay recovery uh, along the journey, the trains above this line are trains that are increasing their delay, whereas the points on this, uh, be, below this line represent the, uh, trains that are uh, gaining time, that are uh, reducing their delay. What is visible in these graphs is actually uh, one very recurrent delay pattern, which is trains that are passing early, they are traveling early at Roskill because they do not stop, and they eventually reduce their earliness down to uh, arriving even late in Copenhagen. And this is a recurrent delay pattern which can be explained by a train that travels early or outside its designated time slot, then we, it will find at the congested station, just like Copenhagen, it will find its designated uh, track occupied by another train, which triggers uh, dispatching decision that eventually will lead to delays. Now, to conclude this preliminary study on the rec uh, delay records from operation, we could measure the actual possible recovery from, from, the, from, uh, from uh, real operation. And we could find that there is some variability in the recovery process. One very important uh, finding was that excessive timetables lack not only is ineffective, as I said in the previous section, but it is even counterproductive because it generates uh, delays uh, through the increase, increase of variability of the recovery. Now, this was one pattern that we could find in the, in the one recurrent pattern in the delay generation uh, process that 
uh, raise some more question about finding even more patterns from this, uh, from the realized operation, applying different techniques which are not only uh, looking at the graphs. So uh, I would like to introduce the, the last paper of this uh, thesis, uh, which starts from what I just said. There's, we identify the existence, uh, the existence of recurring delay patterns from operation, and we want to identify patterns not only in the pairwise station comparison, from, just like we did in the, in the previous section, but we want to study the, journey, the delay ac along the whole journey. And we do it through delay profiles, which are the, uh, the, the set of records that delay of single trains over their journey. And the same is for the delay change profiles. They are the same structure, but they represent the change of delay from the previous sta uh, station. This is not a new method to, uh, to represent the data. Uh, and it has already been studied in, in previous literature. So we have an example from the Danish network where we have the use of aggregate statistics to understand what is the variability of the delay profiles and delay change profiles to identify what are, what are the critical stations where to focus uh, corrective measures. And plus, we also have other applications in Sweden where we have the identification, the visual inspection to identify what are recurrent delay patterns in the development of delays. In particular, in this case, we have the identification of a critical point where we want to measure the robustness of a timetable, looking at identifying a specific station where we have discrete effect of the, of the choices, of the dispatching choices. So we can see that different dispatching choices lead to very similar um, train ter ter delay development on the railway line. I want to mention that, mention that in general big data techniques in, in railway operations are mainly used to predict live the delays, which is useful for the live operation but cannot uh, provide information on how to improve the processes of the railway operation on how uh, we can re re improve the reliability on the long term. Now, uh, what we did was to find recurrent patterns, so we applied a very standard method, which is the k-means clustering, and it is very, uh, very broadly used because of its simplicity and fast in calcul uh, fastness in calculation. What it is doing is to separate the elements of a pooled data set into groups of similar elements through a recursive application of averaging and assignment of the elements to clusters until we reach a point where the, the, the clustering is defined. If we apply to this to uh, the delay profiles, this is what it looks like. In particular, we looked at the Q-Spain because it's on high, uh, on the spotlight of the public authorities, and also it has a very, very dense timetable that allows us to collect a large amount of data. We cannot really see patterns in this, uh, in this representation because everything is overlapped. But if we apply the k-means clustering, this is for southbound trains, then we can separate what are the, the effect of individual uh, uh, delay uh, profiles. So for example, we have delays that increase their delay, uh, trains that increase their delay from Klampenborg to Copenhagen Central, or only increasing their, being punctual basically all the way through, and then only increasing their delay at Copenhagen, exiting Copenhagen and going towards Sweden, or are there similar uh, patterns. This is for the um, delay profiles. We also apply this on the delay change profiles where we have in this slide the, the comparison between the pooled average, so the pooled data set, what we could find um, applying what is the average and also the variability of the delays across, uh, along the journey and what we could see instead clustering the um, the, uh, the data set. We can see that there are patterns that are not visible in, this, uh, in the pool data set. So we have, for example, this cluster that only increases their delay at the end of the, uh, of the journey at Elsinore. These are northbound trains. Or trains that increase their delay from Snekestein to Elsinore. And we can identify the reasons for these uh, recurrent delay patterns. What we can do is to infer the, uh, the composition of the indi individual clusters so, for example, the data that we, got, uh, we had available was, uh, where was mainly uh, time-based uh, data. So we could identify relevant factor in the time of the day or in the day of the week. And in particular cluster, there were a predominance of individual trade and services. We also had some data about the train composition, uh, which we found not to be uh, relevant. And future, future research could uh, identify more uh, relevance of other, uh, even further, uh, further 
uh, factors like weather, passenger flow. Now we'll move to the conclusions of this, uh, of this paper and then I will conclude the, the whole overall presentation. First of all, we identify systematic delays in the, in, the, in the railway operation, which we could use to identify the effect on punctuality and reliability of specific processes. And we could adopt or design specific corrective measures for, the, um, for, the, for these specific processes, systematic delays. A very good thing about this, mo uh, this method is that this is easily applicable to other methods, the, the other, other means of transportation. And the only thing we, we need is actually checkpoints where we can compare a schedule against the real operation. And it's really easy to transfer. And further research could easily uh, find other relevant factors uh, that are uh, collected from the collected data from historical, uh, over historical data from operation. Now to conclude uh, the overall uh, research, the main contribution of this research project were, first of all, an, an assessment of the reliability measures on uh, how they behave against the uh, increase of tra uh, train traffic. We also have an analytical delay propagation model for heterogeneous and homogeneous timetables, and we have the, uh, techniques for data analysis as, also as long as uh, reduction uh, methods to reduce the simulation time. On the theoretical point of view, instead, we have contribution on the identification of the poly this composite polynomial relationship between primary and aggregate delays, uh, which is relevant for the uh, application in the, of the analytical model. We found that there is some variability of delay recovery that also leads us to the effect of the timetable slack. We cannot only we cannot increase too much the timetable slack because it is not only ineffective, but it is also counterproductive in the, in the protection against uh, delays. Now, I would like to conclude with some uh, inspiration for further research in the future that could be the, impl the actual implementation of this model into uh, optimization models that should be done in the IPTO project. And uh, I didn't mention this, but there, there's some improvement that could be, could be done in the estimation of the timetable parameters, like the uh, calculation of the equivalent uh, running time supplement and the uh, buffer time. Uh, plus, for the data analysis, that it could be interesting to apply exactly the same analysis applied to the uh, running time supplements on the headway buffer. We have some more difficulties in this case, where we can have the swap of train order that could generate uh, some, um, some further calculation necessary. And eventually, as I mentioned, we should integrate more uh, sources of information to improve the uh, estimation of the effect of specific factor uh, in the delay generation. All in all, I think that all the results from, from, from this uh, thesis are very easily applicable towards uh, in, in uh, railway industry and also can be applicable in, in research projects in the, in, the in, the, in the near future. And that is the end of the presentation. I'm sorry for being a little too long in time. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this intriguing presentation. I'm sure you have a lot of questions already. Uh, by my estimation, you were perfectly on time because I took the first couple of minutes for the introduction. But for now, uh, we'll have a short break of uh, around 10 minutes. Um, should you need a bathroom break, I can uh, recommend uh, searching at the end of the hallway, either on this floor or on the floor just above. But uh, let's uh, reconvene in uh, 10 minutes. Technically, I'm actually required to ask you to stay here for the questions. So. I don't know why that rule came into being, but you can uh, guess. I will not leave. See you shortly.